Garamucci's ouster followed a week of disarray at the White House after both Reince Priebus and Press Secretary Sean Spicer resigned from their jobs. Now, Sam, you know Scaramucci personally, as I mentioned, are considered to be a longtime friend of his. Have you spoken to him since he left the White House? No, I have not. I sent him a uh, text last night saying, I hope everything's okay, if there's anything I can do to help. But, you know, Miranda, at the end of the day, this was really a tragedy because Anthony, <clears throat> obviously that Ryan Lizza interview he did uh, was, a, was a big problem, and I think he would even admit he made a mistake there. Uh, it was certainly out of the norm. Uh, but the real tragedy here, I think, is with uh, Anthony and Reince, who were fighting uh, since around the transition, and Reince made a point of keeping Anthony outside of the administration. Uh, which, by the way, strategically was a mistake, Miranda. It's a life lesson I learned from this. You want to keep your enemies closer, not out. And once Anthony was out of the administration, he became he came to look as if he was a solution. And he would have been a solution. Anthony would have been tremendous as a communications director. If you look at uh, the private sector experience he had in corporate America and corporate communications, in the SAL conference, with his companies, uh, he would have been really able to translate those skills into this position, and he would have been able to make this an asset for the Trump presidency. The fact of the matter is, Reince Priebus, Sean Spicer, who I like very much, and those RNC people they have in the comms uh, department there, they just don't have the zeitgeist of this administration. Um, you know, And it's a tough administration to have the zeitgeist for. We have a president who is... Uh, he's the first citizen president. He's certainly our first celebrity president. He's a mogul. He's a magnet. He's different. And the kind of, you know, just button up type skills you're going to get from the RNC were never really going to work. And the real problem, Miranda, is that may be here or there, but it's cost the president, I believe, approval ratings. Before Anthony, before Anthony took this position, let's remember, they couldn't even have on-camera briefings anymore. What White House in modern-day America can't have on-camera on briefings? Well, Sam, let um, me ask you this. So, so uh, hearing everything that you're saying, are you saying it was a mistake for the president to let Scaramucci go? I'm, well, that is the president's decision. I think, look, it was not a mistake to let, the pre to let Anthony go, and I think Anthony would admit this because... Did you ever became, talk to him after the, that tirade? Did you ever talk to Scaramucci after that? I don't want to talk about that. So is that a <laughs> yes I, or no? You don't have to say specifically. I understand. But did you speak with him? I, I, had, a short conver I had a short conversation with him that I, I, I just don't want to talk about it. But let's remember, though, first of all, you have General Kelly coming in. And General Kelly uh, has to bring uh, order to this White House. It's very factionalized. And it became a toxic in, uh, situation in the short time Anthony was there because, look, they have to add people to this White House. They have to add people to this administration. So as much as these RNC apparatchiks may have to go because they're just not uh, the type of zeitgeist for the president, whatever it is, um, that's, not, that's not the number one priority right now. And I, I think it was, became an uncomfortable situation for a lot of these people that were there after that interview. Uh, at the end of the day, though, if you are going to be comms director and you call a reporter, you call the reporter. The reporter is in contact you, Miranda. Mm -hmm. You have to make the rules with them. That's just, that's, you know, I mean, that's just common sense there. And Anthony screwed up. Um, but, at, but, and here's the but, Anthony will be fine out of this. Anthony is uh, going to be successful, whatever Anthony does. I'm sure he's going to be around. And I'm sure he'll stay uh, close to the president. He's a very close relationship with the president. Remember, he raised like over $35 million for the president. And that was a difficult mm -hmm. proposition during right. that election because the president wasn't getting donors to support him. So, I mean, is he hurt at all by the president's decision, or does he think he made the right call? Does Anthony, I, I can't speak for Anthony on that. I'm Do you sure. think he was surprised? Were uh, you surprised? Let me ask you this. Were you surprised? No, I was not surprised because when you had general, I, see, the issue was I wasn't surprised if Ryan Sprevis was still there, that they would have kept Anthony. Uh, I, I think that they probably would have had some had to have some kind of meeting about that. Uh, but once General Kelly came in, obviously that type of behavior was not going to be acceptable. Um, and I think he had to make a point of letting Anthony go. Uh, but I wasn't surprised that he was let go. You know, there was some misreporting out there that the president had talked to Anthony about this specific interview after it happened. 
To my understanding, he hadn't. And unfortunately, Anthony's having some personal issues too. And if you're going through a divorce, another problem was going to be if they're going through a divorce, if I'm representing uh, his wife mm -hmm. and he's a, and he's the comms director, I'm a lawyer. You'd want her to make very salacious filings. It was just going to be a distraction. And it's really unfortunate once again, because if Anthony had started on day one in this White House, this was not this would not have happened. The circumstances wouldn't have happened. The bad blood between Reince and him, you know, wouldn't have existed. And, you know, I've been through a situation like this myself during the campaign uh, with Corey Lewandowski. Um, Early on, after Corey was hired, he got me fired. I was initially rehired. But at the end of the day, we were never going to be able to work together because, you know, we were in competition for the president's attention. Uh, and I felt that it was inappropriate that I brought somebody in who was then going to be my boss. That's also a life lesson I learned. And, it's, and you know, it's really water under the bridge. But I had always thought that, you know, Anthony, by him going in there, uh, there was going to create some kind of problem. And I also want to say something else, Miranda. Whether you liked Reince or not, whether you were a fan of Reince's performance as chief of staff, and I wasn't, I thought he could have done a better job, although I will say in his defense it's going to be very difficult to work for this president in his first six months into the presidency to adjust. But Miranda, let me finish. I didn't like the way they let him go. I thought they could have done it a little uh, much more respectfully. They could have uh, given him some kind of time frame. They could have announced it differently. Uh, and in light of letting him go the day after Anthony's interview, I also thought that that would probably lead to Anthony's departure, especially because they announced General Kelly as the chief of staff. Okay, I also want to ask you, because there's been a number of theories thrown out there as to why Scaramucci uh -huh. was let go. We mentioned the tirade. Uh, you talked about his relationship with Reince Priebus. Uh, you heard Sarah Huckabee Sanders seem to suggest that it was what he said uh, to uh, that reporter. That was the reason he was let go. But we've also heard reports, at least the New York mm -hmm. Times is reporting, um, that it was Jim Kelly said, you know, if I'm going to come in and do this, chief of staff, I want him out. So... What do you think prompted the president to make that call? The, look, the president will always take suggestions. The president, uh, the president is always going to listen to people's opinions. At the end of the day, this was the president's decision. Uh, one thing I do think is that the pre one thing I think that hasn't been really reported. It's my understanding that the president talked to Anthony about this. He wasn't just summarily dismissed by John Kelly. He went to go talk to the president. And the president basically said, look, I apologize, but this isn't going to work out after that Liza incident. Um, you know, the other issue is, too, is I had always said, a lot of people always say to me, oh, you want to go work in the White House. I don't necessarily want to go work in the White House. But because, and here's the because, once you go into that White House, it's much different setting than working in a campaign. Your behavior in a campaign is, you know, can be a little out of the box, a little feisty. But going into the White House, you're representing the country and you're working in the greatest office in the world and you have to conduct yourself in a professional manner. And this Ryan Lizza uh, interview, not, I think Anthony would admit this, 10 times out of 10, objectively, you would get fired for it. Um, I hope that Anthony's able to keep a relationship mm -hmm. with the president. The president has his respect and the president likes him a lot. But let's also remember Anthony was able to stand up to CNN before he was uh, hired and named for that position. And, and Miranda, if you look at Anthony's interview, uh, excuse me, Anthony's first public press conference, right. he was a breath of fresh air. It was something new. It was something different. It was out of the box. It was looked like it was going to work. But Something I've, I've been through too, Miranda, is when you work around Donald Trump and he's this fantastic character, this man, he's got this, you know, he has it. He's a superstar and he brings you in. But something that you have to remember, I had to learn this, is you're not Donald Trump. And Donald Trump can act any way he wants. President Trump can do whatever he wants. But when you work for him, you work for him and you're not him. And you're there to serve him and to help him. Um, but he exudes this type of confidence and you become, it's something where, you know, he has something where he thinks you're, the, you, he makes you think you're the only person in the world, right. calls you all the time, he's fun. And it's a difficult proposition. It's very hard to adapt to.
I, and earlier, I, I want to correct something. I think I said Jim Kelly. Obviously, I meant uh, John Kelly. Uh, you mentioned this earlier, so I just kind of want to backtrack a little bit. You said Scaramucci was a big fundraiser for the president. Most people know that. Do you think um, any of his supporters are going to be upset by this decision and how he was treated? What? Do I, I'm sorry, what did you say? Do you think that any of scary? you mentioned Scaramucci being a, a big time fundraiser for the president. Right. Do you think any of his mm -hmm. supporters are going to be upset with his oust? No, I don't. Look, I think part of the issue was, too, is that for me, I'll tell you something. For me, I'm a Steve Bannon guy. I'm a Bannonite. And what he said about Steve Bannon to me was completely unacceptable. And it was not something that he had intimated, you know, uh, he had told people like me, not me, but uh, he had made it clear to people. He did his first interview with Breitbart. He had made it clear to people he was going to be an ally of Steve Bannon's. And to say that about Steve, after people like me talked to Steve and said, Steve, try this out. And to do that, I mean, it was really, that's, that's where I had the major problem with it, frankly. You, now, okay, so you're that, mentioning Bannon. So it's been reported that Bannon really didn't want Scaramucci to join the White House staff. Do you think uh -huh. that possibly played a role in his firing? Perhaps. Look, perhaps. I mean, General Kelly and You Steve said you Bannon talked to Steve Bannon. Close... Did you talk to him? I did not talk to Steve Bannon about, Anth about the Ryan Lizza interview. No, I did okay. not. I didn't have to. Hey, Mar Miranda, I didn't have to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? I, I'd imagine not. All right, so, of course, now the big question is who will replace, replace uh, Scaramucci and what role will Chief of Staff John Kelly have in choosing that person, according to the Daily Caller? It could be Kellyanne Conway. Mm -hmm. Um, as you know, she started her career with President Trump as his campaign manager. A couple other right. names have been thrown around as well. Uh, what are you hearing? You're close to the White House. Uh, we've also heard I'm not, I'm like... not hearing anything. No? Right. Well, I, I will tell you one person, um, and I think it would have been a lot different if he was able to join the administration in the beginning, who is extremely talented, who knows the president's zeitgeist, who is, who is out of the box, too, who obviously can do this job, has the, ta has the button up uh, specific skills to, is somebody like Jason Miller. I know Jason's having, you know, Jason's doing very, very well in the private sector. Uh, but Jason, as you recall, he went from the Cruz campaign to the uh, Trump campaign. And he really, you know, he went out there for the president. If Kellyanne would take that position, that would be fantastic as well. I know Kellyanne was the campaign manager of the campaign and theoretically becoming a uh, comms director and not counselor to the president. See, would seem as if it's would seem as if it's some kind of demotion, but it really wouldn't be. And in this case, Kellyanne is so outstanding at communications. Every time Kellyanne, I always tell her this: every time she writes something, or she used to put out memos, you know, from her company or polling company, those would go into my special box on my computer where I would save it for smart people things, things you always want to remember. Um, and she would do a fantastic job. She's fantastic with the press. She has great relationships with them. And I, I, I but you know what? I don't know who they're going to bring in. I just, I don't know. I try to stay, believe it or not, Miranda, I try to stay out of those things, those personnel things. Really? I mean, I was, I, 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 <laughs> I helped Anthony get in. I don't know how that makes me look now. Ooh. ooh <laughs> right? Ooh. Okay. You guys might have to talk it over. No, not at all. I love Anthony. All right. Well, we love you. Thank you so much for joining us here on America Talks Live. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Miranda.